The purpose of this video is to demonstrate data mapping. Data mapping is the process of linking a data point within a data source to its corresponding variable within the aspect of an asset. To begin, I'm going to add some generic aspects to my newly created VBHB asset, and then we will map the data points to the variables contained within those aspects. To do so, I need to go to Types, find our Triumph Bender type, and we're going to edit that type to add the aspects. So from here, we'll choose our aspects. I've got some generic ones we can use. Uh, machine status. I'll just change that to machine status. Add. And also production data. All right, our new aspects are now a part of our VBHP type. I'll save that. And now we need to map data points to those uh, new vari newly added variables so that we can see them and visualize them in Fleet Manager. To do so, I'll go to Assets. And then I'll select the MindConnect Nano, the MC Nano hardware device, hardware asset. Click here. Now here we have a list of our data sources and our data points. Let me collapse these and see here we've got four different data sources, each of which has a few uh, data points. So for this vertical bend, hairpin bender, we're going to create a new data source and then add some data points to it. Uh, to do so, we need to enter edit mode, and then we can add a new data source. Uh, the protocol that we'll be using is S7 for the 1200 PLC. We'll give it a name, EBHB SDS 8-123. The name, I usually name after the name of the machine. That seems to be the simplest way of doing that. Uh, there may be better ways of organizing your data points and data sources, especially with more exper uh, more complex systems, but this works for now. Here, we enter the reading cycle. This is how often we want to take a reading. Um, I find that 15 seconds is a useful reading cycle to have. And then for the IP address, we need to enter the IP address of the PLC where we'll be collecting the data from. Now, if we go to TIA portal and look at the device configuration of the PLC, we'll find its IP address. Here we see the IP address is 192.168.214.5. So that's what we'll want to enter here in MindSphere. Click Accept. And now if we scroll to the bottom, here we have our new data source. Now that we have a data source, we can start adding some data points to our data source. First, uh, let's monitor the M status bit or byte. M status unit, we'll just give it a unit of M status as well. And now something important to note here is that the unit that we give it here in the data point must match exactly the unit specified in the aspect. Um, if the capitalization is off, or if it does not otherwise match exactly, you will not be able to link this data point to the variable in your aspect. Data point type for this, let's go back to TIA portal and take a look at our data block. This one is in DB10. And here we see M status 
it is a type integer. And its address is going to be db10.dbword52. Accept. All right, we'll add a few more data points. Let's also add the mode. Give that a unit of mode as well. That will also be an int. And that will be address 54 of DB10. I'm going to add two more, and these ones will be a little bit different. I'm going to add a parts produced data point. Now for the unit, let's go back over here. That's in DR2. Here's our parts produced. You'll notice that this is a real and that the addresses are four bytes apart, meaning that they're double words instead of si single words. Um, so for the type, we're going to enter double. And then for the address, it's address 204 of data block 11. So db11.dbd204. And the unit here will be parts. I'll add one more. This will be parts, this shift, parts for the unit. And this will be a double as well. It's right here. And it's address 208, db11. D two zero eight accept. All right, now we can see our four new data points. So to save it, we need to scroll back up to the top, click on save. Yes, I'm sure. Now that our data points have been created, they must be mapped to the variables within our aspects. To do so, we'll click on View Data Mappings. and scroll to the bottom. Now you'll see these other ones that I have been previously working with. They have been mapped to a specific asset, then to an aspect within that asset, and then to a variable within that aspect. And so that's what we're going to do down here. So to link this to a variable, click on link variable. Uh, here we just need to click on change to get out of there and go up a level. Now here is a list of all of our assets. Now we're going to be linking these to our VBHB asset. So we'll click on that and then click accept. Now here is a list of all of the available aspects within our VBHB asset. Now, M status is going to be under machine status, so let's take a look under there. And now you'll see that there are three variables here that are part of the machine status aspect. There's active message mode and M status. Now you'll notice that these first two say that they are not compatible, whereas the third gives me the option to link that variable. That is because, like I mentioned earlier, the unit must match exactly. So because the unit of M status does not match the unit of mode or message, I cannot select either of those variables. So I'll go ahead and select this one and then click on accept. And then here you can see that this data point is now linked to our VBHB asset, to the machine status aspect, to the M status variable. Now we'll do the same thing for our next three variables. Link variable, scroll down, mode, 
accept. Parts produced. This one's in the production data aspect. Now notice that these are both enabled because for both parts produced and parts to shift, the unit is parts. So you have to make sure that you select the correct one. Uh-oh, now here we've run into a problem. You'll notice that I made a typo on parts. I spelled it patterns. Therefore, it is not showing up as a compatible uh, variable. So, we'll cancel out of there, scroll back to the top, and go back to View Configuration. From here, we can enter Edit Mode, scroll back down to our problem data point, and we can fix the unit parts. Okay, now that it's spelled correctly, we should be able to link, oops, first you have to save, we should be able to now link that data point to our variable. View data mappings, back to the bottom, link variable, and there it is. All right, so now all of our changes have been saved, but they've only been saved in the online version of our configuration. Uh, let's go back to view configuration. And then to transfer this configuration to the MindConnect Nano, we have to click on Apply Changes. And that'll apply these conf this configuration to our actual device. All right, and so that'll be done in just a few seconds. And now we can go to Fleet Manager to see if our variables are appearing with data there. All right, here's our VBHB asset. Here are our newly added aspects. I'll open both of those up. Now, oh, looks like we've got a data point already. You'll notice there's nothing down here yet. It may take up to two minutes for data to start appearing. So I'm going to let this just sit here for a minute, and we'll see if anything appears in our production data aspect. Oh, and there it is. We've got a data point. Parts produced, 42, parts to shift, 20. That's perfect. I had gone online with the PLC on my desk and modified these variables so that we could make sure that it's working. So we see that both of those variables are working correctly, and both of these are currently reading zero. Now, I think that they are not both set to zero in the PLC, so we might need to do some troubleshooting there. Looking at TAA portal, we can see that these are, in fact, set to zero. I had forgotten to set the retain bit on my test PLC, and I have cycle power. So I'll try changing these. Modify this to 1, and this to 2. And then we'll watch over here. And then these should change in just a minute here. And there it is. See that those two values just changed? So we know that we did, in fact, map our data values correctly.